This video is an introduction to stereotactic core biopsy. The objectives are to learn the indications for stereotactic core biopsy, to review the equipment, to review pre-procedure planning, and to review the procedure itself. We will learn new terminology including stage, pass, differential, stroke, and stroke margin. So first, what is stereotactic core biopsy? It's a minimally invasive procedure that uses x-ray images to guide the procedure. The images are acquired at midline and at plus and minus 15 degrees off of midline to get x, y, and z coordinates. The indications for this procedure include calcification seen on at least one view or a suspicious mass or area of architectural distortion that has no ultrasound correlate. So now it's time to review the equipment. First, we'll discuss the table. At our institution, we use the Hologic Lorad Multicare Platinum Table. The woman will lay prone on the table here, and the targeted breast will hang down through the hole. The orientation of the patient on the table will depend on the breast that is targeted and the approach. When we start the biopsy, the biopsy table will actually move up and all of the action will happen here below. We are now going to look at the table where the biopsy happens. Remember, the patient lays prone on the table over here and the breast hangs down through the hole and is being compressed between the compression paddle and the breast platform. The biopsy device rests here on the stage and can be advanced in or out of the breast using the Z knob which is here. The X and the Y knobs control the biopsy device location in the X and Y coordinates. And this is the LCD monitor that shows the coordinates of the stage on the target. Now on to the biopsy device. At our institution, we use the Hologic Soros Aviva Vacuum Assisted Core Biopsy Device image here on the right. We connect this to the ATEC biopsy system, which is imaged on the left, which controls the vacuum. We have two different types of Aviva needles that we use. Both are 9 gauge, but they have different size apertures. The standard needle is the one that we commonly use and is shown here. It has an aperture length of 20 millimeters, whereas the petite has an aperture length of 12 millimeters. The dead space just beyond the aperture in the standard needle is 8 millimeters, as shown in the picture. We rarely use the petite needle, but when we do, it is to sample a target in a smaller breast. Both work the same way. The biopsy device is fired in the breast. The length that the device travels is called the stroke. Once in the post-fire position, the tissue gets sucked down into the well and there's a cutting portion that cuts over the tissue. This will be shown in more detail in the next slide. Now I'm going to show you how the biopsy device works. First you fire it, then you press and hold your foot on the pedal to perform the biopsy. That's the vacuum, that's the cutter, and a beep. The beep indicates that you can then adjust the biopsy device. Let me play that for you again. To stop sampling, you have to take your foot off the pedal. We're now going to discuss procedure planning. There are four primary steps when you plan for these procedures. Number one, you want to confirm the target. Number two, you want to confirm that breast thickness is sufficient for the procedure. Number three, you want to determine your approach. And number four, you want to make sure printed images are available to take into the procedure room. To confirm the target, you want to make sure that you can see it on your diagnostic views and that it has been appropriately worked up. You also want to make sure that this is the correct modality to use for biopsy. Once you've confirmed your target, you want to make sure that your breast is sufficiently thick for the biopsy. The Aviva standard, which is our most commonly used needle, has a minimum compression, recommended compression of 2.8 centimeters, and the Aviva Petite, which we use less frequently, but we use with smaller breasts, the minimum compression is 2 centimeters. We typically do not perform stereotactic core biopsies in breasts that are less than 2 centimeters. There are alternate approaches when the breast is smaller, However, this is rarely performed and it is beyond the scope of this video. Now we'll discuss how to determine your approach. For starters, you want to choose the distance that's shortest from the skin surface. If the target is equidistant from the skin in the two different approaches, then there are other strategies you can use. You can choose your approach where you can see the target the best, or you can choose the approach where you can get the best compression. And lastly, if not already done so, you want to print the non-magnified CC and 90 degree lateral images as well as those that are magnified. And then circle the target so that we're all on the same page at the time of the biopsy. It's best to bring these images into the room with you at the time of the exam. 
Now we'll discuss those steps in relation to our case. So first we have to identify our target, which is definitely tough in this particular case. You'll have to believe me when I tell you that they're in the central breast on the CC view around here, and they're in the superior breast on the 90 degree lateral view around here. These calcifications were worked up with magnification views and were interpreted as suspicious for which a biopsy was recommended. We then evaluated her breast tissue thickness, which was 6.2 centimeters, which is well above the limit of 2 centimeters for the petite and 2.8 centimeters for the regular needles. We then had to choose an approach. Given that the target is in the central breast on the CC view, we could come from the medial or the lateral direction. However, we felt these calcifications were slightly closer to the lateral skin surface, and so we measured from a lateral approach, from around here to here, which turned out to be around 6 centimeters. Given that the calcifications were closer to the superior surface on the 9 degree lateral view, we chose to measure from the superior surface to the calcifications, which turned out to be around 3 centimeters. It was clear that coming from a superior approach would be the shortest distance from the skin surface. Because we're coming from above, at the time of the biopsy, we placed the patient's breast in the CC orientation and compressed this area here. This works well for compression, and it also works well because this happened to be the view that we could see the calcifications the best. Now we'll review how to actually perform the procedure. Before you begin, you want to set up your tray. And just to show you, this is the needle guide here, which we'll be using later. While you're setting up the tray, the tech will be positioning the patient on the table and placing her breast in compression. So here we have our patient laying prone on the table with her breast hanging down through the hole and being compressed in the CC view. Remember, the calcifications were located in the central breast on the CC view, and we were going to come from a superior approach, which is what you're seeing here. We then take an image straight on of the breast, which is our scout view. The portion of the breast that is imaged is the portion that's being compressed by the compression plate, and you'll notice the orientation of the breast for the image. The inferior part of what's imaged, which is here, is going to be closer to the nipple, and the superior part of what's imaged is close to the chest wall. So here's our scout image, and notice that the calcifications are at the center of the image here. And remember your orientation. The inferior aspect of the image is towards the nipple and the superior aspect of the image is towards the chest wall. The right and the left parts of the image are variable depending on whether the breast is positioned in the CC or the lateral view and whether it's the right or the left breast that is being imaged. We are now ready to take our stereo pair. We then move the camera 15 degrees off of center in one direction and 15 degrees off of center in the other direction to acquire our stereo pair. This enables us to target the calcifications and to obtain an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate. The first step is to make sure that the reference cursors are positioned correctly, and these are over here. We're telling the computer that X, Y, and Z are zero in this location, and this correlates with the real uh, spot on the compression paddle, which I'll show you a moment, in a moment. We then target the calcifications to get an X, a Y, and a Z coordinate. In our case, the x, y, and z coordinates are minus 6.9, 29.1, and 33.6. This 33.6 of the z value reflects the target's depth within the breast, and it's an important number to make sure that the target is not too superficial, so that we'll get the skin in our sample, and that it's not too deep, so that we'll end up hitting the back plate when we biopsy. This diagram will help us review how we can use the z value to plan our procedure. We will round our z value of 33.6 to 34, as is shown in the picture here. The z value equals the distance from a zero point here, which also correlates with that reference point we just discussed, and the target, which is here. The distance from the zero point to the skin surface is 12 millimeters, and so the true depth of the target beneath the skin is actually the z value minus this 12 millimeters, or in our particular case is 34 minus 12, which is 22 millimeters. This is important to understand because notice the target is centered within the well, and the well actually extends one centimeter proximal and one centimeter distal to the target. We have to make sure that the target depth is actually more than a centimeter deep beneath the breast, 
so that the well is buried beneath the skin. In our case, the true depth is 2.2 centimeters beneath the skin, so we have plenty of room. This is not an issue if the breast actually bulges through the compression plate and actually extends to the level of that zero point, in which case the Z value reflects the true depth of the target within the breast. Alternatively, if the target is very superficial, for example, if it was here, right beneath the skin surface, you can simply position the target so that it's in the proximal well as opposed to the center of the well. Next, we'll discuss how to make sure you don't hit the back plate. This raises the issue of stroke margin. Stroke margin is equal to the distance between the tip of the biopsy device and the back plate and should be a positive number. To calculate the stroke margin, you take the true depth of the target beneath the skin, which is equal to Z minus 12, and you add the distance of the distal well, which in this particular needle is 10 millimeters, and the distance of the dead space, which is the distal well to the needle tip, which in this particular needle is 8 millimeters. You then subtract these numbers from the total compression, which is equal to the stroke margin, and that's this distance here. Rather than redoing these calculations for each biopsy, each biopsy device comes with specifications that have already done the work for you. Remember this sheet from earlier? This reviews the specifications for the biopsy devices that we use, the standard and petite needles. So if you look under the safety row, here it states that for the standard needle, you have to add 6 to your Z, and that has to be less than the compression in order to perform the biopsy safely. Similarly, for the petite needle, you have to add 2 to your Z, and that has to be less than the compression to perform it safely. In addition, if you look at the sheet, you'll also see other specifications for these biopsy devices, such as the aperture length, which I've been calling the well, and also the length of the dead space, which is the distance from the well to the needle tip. Now let's go back to our case. We've already discussed the Z value, but now let's briefly discuss the X and the Y values. The X value is in the horizontal plane, and positive is to the right, and negative is to the left. So if you want to shift your biopsy device to the right, you move it in a positive direction. The Y value is in the vertical plane, and positive is actually towards the nipple, or down, and negative is towards the chest wall, or up. So if you actually want to move the biopsy device down or towards the nipple, you'll move it in a positive direction. Now to review, the true depth of the target is equal to Z minus 12. To make sure that you don't get the skin in your sample, a good rule of thumb is that the true depth of the target should be greater than 1 centimeters. But remember, this is not always necessary as I mentioned in the last slide. The stroke margin is equal to the distance between the needle tip and the post fire position and the back plate and it's important to have a positive stroke margin to perform the biopsy safely. For our regular needle, Z plus 6 must be less than or equal to the compression, and for our petite needle, Z plus 2 must be less than or equal to the compression. Now that we have our stereo coordinates, which you can see in the upper left corner, we press the transmit button, which sends these coordinates to the LCD display on the stereo biopsy table. And you can see those here in the pass row, and over here where it says minus 6.9, 29.1, and 33.6. Immediately above this row, you can see where it says stage, and this represents where the biopsy device is in real time now. This row here that says differential reflects the difference between where the biopsy device is currently and where you want it to be at the time of the biopsy. Now we're ready to start the procedure. While the tech is getting the biopsy device ready, you'll be cleaning the breast with the chloroprep that's on your tray and getting the needle guide, which is here, and placing it on the stage. You can see now that the needle guide has been placed. It's right over here. And the biopsy device will be positioned on the stage such that the tip will actually extend through that little hole. Once the biopsy device is on the stage, we move the tip to the reference area here to tell the computer that this location is where X, Y, and Z are equal to zero. This correlates with the ref reference location that we previously discussed on the scout image. Here we are looking through the side of the compression plate to make sure that the needle tip is truly at that reference point. The tech will then press this button here, Z equals zero, to tell the computer that that marks the reference spot. The tech will then press two buttons simultaneously, this one, the red motor enable, and this one on the side, 
the target button, and the biopsy device will then move to the coordinates of the to the x and y coordinates of the target, but the z will be a negative number given that the biopsy device is still outside of the breast. We then advance the biopsy device closer to the skin so that we can mark our area for subsequent lidocaine administration and biopsy. We then begin giving the lidocaine first with the skin wheel and subsequently by giving deeper anesthetic. And different people have different strategies for how to administer the lidocaine. You'll have to discuss this with each attending that you work with. We then use the scalpel to create a small skin incision through which the biopsy device will advance. In the lower right image, we're using our hemostat to widen the skin incision. We then advance the biopsy device through the skin incision and into the breast. And we stop when we reach a differential of minus 5 in the z-axis. This means that our needle tip is 5 millimeters proximal to the target. You can see that the differential for the x and y coordinates are both 0, and that's because the location of the biopsy device on the stage is the same as the target location which is marked by the pass. Our biopsy device is now located in the pre-fire position. This is a schematic that shows the pre-fire position where the biopsy device is 5 millimeters proximal to the target lesion. We then take our pre-fire stereo pair images and we see that the calcifications are located here and here, largely equidistant from the needle tip. There are times when the target may appear further away from the needle on one of the views. This may require repositioning of the biopsy device. Troubleshooting for this situation is beyond the scope of the video. We then deploy the biopsy device by pushing on the green button. The distance the needle travels after you've fired it is called the stroke. Once it is fired, the target will be in the center of the well as we saw earlier, like this. And again, the distance from the needle in the post-fire position to the back plate is called the stroke margin. We now take a post-fire stereo pair to confirm appropriate needle position relative to the target. And here again, you see our calcifications immediately adjacent to the well. When we sample our target, we choose the direction of the well based on a clock face, where 12 o'clock is at the superior aspect and 6 o'clock is at the inferior aspect, 9 is to the left and 3 is to the right. Because our calcifications are immediately below the well, we'll be primarily targeting in the 4 to 8 o'clock location. Before we start, we adjust the biopsy device so that the well is facing the o'clock direction that we want. We do this by turning the back of the biopsy device. The orientation of the well is shown here in this display. At present, the well is facing superiorly and targeting the 12 o'clock location. We then press on the foot pedal to start the biopsy. As we're biopsying, the sample gets suctioned out and caught in this filter here. We then remove the sample and place it on the telfu pad. It's important that the sample not be clumped together so that we can adequately visualize the calcifications when we do our specimen radiograph. This is an example of how the specimen looks on the telfa. We then take a mammogram image of this sample to identify the presence of calcifications within the specimen. We orient the specimen radiograph to correlate with the specimen on the telfa, and we then isolate those samples containing calcifications and put them into a separate jar. We label that jar as with calcifications. The remaining specimen goes into another specimen jar that says no calcifications. We then send these specimens to pathology. As long as calcifications are within the specimen, we're ready to remove our biopsy device. When we remove the biopsy device, we leave the plastic coaxial sheath in place. We're then ready to deploy our clip, and this is what it looks like. We then place the clip introducer through the coaxial sheath. To deploy the clip, you completely depress the white spring at the back of the clip introducer. We then rotate the clip introducer 180 degrees and pull it back slowly as you can see here. We then take our final post clip image. Here we see that the clip has been deployed in the biopsy bed. We then remove both the clip and coaxial introducers and hold pressure. 
It is at this time that we review post-procedure instructions with the patient. We then perform a post-procedure mammogram. When we perform a post-procedure mammogram, we're looking for a few things. Number one, we are looking to confirm that we appropriately targeted the area in question. Number two, that our clip deployed. And number three, we're looking to see the location of the clip relative to the target. In this particular example, our post-biopsy changes in clip are in the appropriate position in the central and superior left breast, confirming that we did sample the correct calcifications and that our clip deployed and is in the area of the biopsy. You have now completed this introductory video on stereotactic core biopsy.